The first question is, is there a limit you must reach with classes credits before you can transfer? This question was asked by Azawa underscore the underscore crazy underscore cat underscore lady. <laughs> Um, so when it comes to credits and classes, I think something you definitely want to do is reach out to the new guidance counselors at your school, or new school, and see which credits from your old school will transfer over because some schools do have a max amount of transferable credits. So you want to check to make sure that the credits that you take do transfer over. If some of them don't, you have a plan for how you're going to make up those credits and graduate on time. Um, I mean, I don't know, you transferred. Is that something you had to do? Yeah. I mean, as, as well as having a maximum, most schools do have a minimum, um, which makes sense, obviously. They True. don't want to just go off your good word that you've been <laughs> studious and doing your thing. Um, so oftentimes, folks start thinking about transferring mid-semester in their either first or second semester, but they probably haven't met a minimum amount of credits for most schools at that point. Um, so I personally actually had to take classes at a community college in the interim between my first school and my final school. Um, so you definitely, you know, like Mackenzie said, you have to pay attention to the school's guidance on what the maximum is, what the minimum is, and most schools are pretty transparent about it. Um, but you may have to reach out and ask to talk to somebody about it if it's not clearly legible on the website. I think there's also a rule if the school is not regionally accredited, that, and then you're going to a school that is regionally accredited, then the credits won't transfer over in that case. So maybe before you choose a school, see if it's an accredited school. <laughs> yeah, I think just going back to is there a limit you must reach? Technically, no. If you just want to drop out and you, you can't stand that school, you can do that. Uh, it, is a, it is an issue. Tyler's giving you permission. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to a school, you're paying X amount of dollars, and you're like, I need to be here to get those credits, money's money, so it, it does become a hassle. And so what Abby just said, going to a community school for a little bit to get certain credits is definitely a valid option. So even if you're not getting the full credit and you're just extremely unhappy and you're paying up the wazoo for it, you might want to yeah. consider doing that. Uh, also, kind of to turn this a little bit, if you're in a program and you're not only thinking about transferring to a different school, but you actually want to transfer to a different program, just take the credits that are the general credits. Mm. And then if you're in that same school for a while, and it actually goes both ways, but if you're in that same school for a while, you can then transfer to another program, hopefully getting into the program that you want to get into. So you could come in as a general studies and then transfer into business or whatever it is that you might want to do. Um, and the same approach where if you're taking the general credits and then you're cutting out, there is a minimum, as Abby said, there's a max usually, uh, and then transferring over to whatever the other school is. So transferring, yes, can be considered transferring to a different school, but it can also be transferring into a different program at your school. So that's just some food for thought. <laughs> I know a friend who transferred schools, and she said that before she chose the school she wanted to go to, she actually went to the guidance counselors at the different schools, and they evaluated her credits, and were able to like hand her a piece of paper showing her what credits will transfer to that school and which ones won't. Mm -hmm. And she said it was different depending on the school. Yeah. So yeah. that's what it absolutely idea is. Doing. Yeah. I think that's a really good idea, just having an open line of communication um, with the guidance counselors and admissions counselors at the schools that you're interested in, even if you haven't been really, you know, deep into the application process for those schools yet, they'll be happy to talk to you because obviously they want you to come to their school if you're a good fit, so they want to talk to you, so don't hesitate to reach out. I think a lot of schools have not just guidance counselors, but they have specifically transfer guidance counselors too. Yeah. So don't hesitate to reach out to any of the missions and then get pointed in the right direction. Right. Uh, you okay. said just going on the website. Some school websites can be a little uh, outdated. So uh, coming from the, website, yeah. the information they great, share. Great way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Outdated. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Windows ninety five booting up. <laughs> but you can uh, definitely reach out, call talk to somebody and get that connection. And not only is it you want to transfer to that school, but now you're actually building a rapport with that, with somebody at that school. So if you're thinking of transferring and you may not get in, this person could give a recommendation too. Mm -hmm. So that's also a benefit. 
And if you're like me and you don't like talking to strangers on the phone, you can probably find their email addresses on the website too. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs>